what's up with DeAndre Aiden? I mean, if you know me, you've been watching my channel. This is video number 10 about DeAndre Aiden. The sixth of which is going to be a somewhat negative video about him. Uh, four of which have been positive, though. But DeAndre Aiden, we're at video number six of negative things, and it really has to come out down to the fact that three of the last uh, four close games the Suns have played, well, the last three close games the Suns have played against the Pacers, against the Lakers, and against the Blazers, DeAndre Aiden has not even played in the fourth quarter, and you gotta wonder, what's going on there? I mean, you can say it's it, it was situational based, right? Against the Lakers, who really didn't have a big man, and against the Blazers, who, similar situation. I mean, I guess they had an S. Cantor, but actually Cantor was closing out a lot of games, so as a more interesting game against the Pacers. DeAndre Aiden doesn't touch the four for the last 15 minutes of the game against a team that's starting two big men, uh, two, two big men, and DeMontis Sabonis and Miles Turner. No DeAndre Aiden on the court. And we'll break it down, but it, it's a really interesting situation going on here. And I do want to make it clear, just as part of this intro, we're just criticizing him right here. Uh, you can't just say that he's perfect, because he's definitely not the perfect player. And if you say he's the perfect player, then you don't want him to improve. And if he doesn't improve, this team isn't, like, a true contender. He needs to get better. He, ne he needs to improve. That's just the fact of the matter. So we're, we're holding him accountable here. We're, you know, we're calling him out. We're making sure yeah, he knows that he needs to be better. And before I go any further, maybe click subscribe. I'm trying to get to 900 subscribers by, the, uh, by Wednesday. That would be pretty cool. So, yeah, every subscriber really counts. I'm uh, making a lot of videos about the Suns. I also am going to be making videos about the NCAA tournament and scouting college players. And I started a series called If I Were the GM, which is based on NBA 2K. And I've featured teams like the Suns and the Heat so far in that series. So maybe check out those videos. But let's talk more about DeAndre Ayton. So the last three games. The Pacers game. Why was he not closing out the game? Well, first of all, it's a good argument to make that he played 29 minutes in that game without playing the last 15 minutes. He played 20 minutes in the first uh, the first half. That's quite a lot of minutes. And a lot of it had to do with just trying to counter Sabonis and Turner with Sarge and Aiden. They're two big men on the Phoenix Suns. And it, it, was, it was a solid maneuver. Uh, I, I, would, I didn't hate it, but it wasn't successful. They, you didn't create that positive advantage, which doesn't make sense. The Suns have been really good at just, you know, keeping it neutral and not giving up runs. Well, even if they do come, give up runs, they come up big at the end. And it, it was neutral, so the Suns did achieve that, but the, the Pacers just went on a few runs. The Suns got sloppy. They turned over the ball quite a bit in that first half. DeAndre Aiden, that's not, he wasn't a big part of it, as he usually is, you know, He's usually throwing passes out of bounds and, you know, not catching the ball. I mean, a few of those occurrences did happen, but it wasn't the usual DeAndre and turnover-prone machine. Um, but in this game, I think a lot of it had to deal with DeAndre Aiden is just not a high-energy guy. He isn't able to recover from a situation in which the team is going down, and he's just going down with the burning ship. The Suns did not bring enough energy versus the Pacers. The Pacers brought a lot of energy. They were really pumped up to try to beat down the Suns. Kind of like that that Pelicans game uh, when they lost to the Pelicans I, and earlier in the run or right before this uh, good Suns run. By the way, you shouldn't like... <laughs> Suns... Yeah, the Suns community's gotten kind of toxic. Like, they've won 17 of their last 21 games. Like, seriously, if you're getting mad about one loss against the Pacers, who played extremely well in the defensive end, and, yeah, I mean, they just had a great night, you know? Sometimes this just happens. You know, you can't win every single game. So, yeah, I just want to make that clear. What is the Suns community talking about? This is a game that is fine to lose. If you're going to lose games this season, it's fine to lose them to teams that went out of their way to try to... No. I mean, you shouldn't want to lose any games this season, but the Pacers put in a lot of effort. Suns did try to come back, and you just shouldn't have put, they shouldn't have put themselves in that situation. 
Was that DeAndre Aiden's fault? No, but he wasn't a proponent of change. He's just riding and dying with the team. If the team is down on energy, DeAndre Aiden is going all the ways down with them. And that's why he didn't return to the court versus the Pacers. But that doesn't explain versus the Blazers, where he wasn't in versus Ines Cantor. And... Actually, that was just Daria Sarge having a brilliant night. I don't know. But, you know, you, you would have liked to see DeAndre Aiden in the game. I think a lot of the issue has to deal with... Wait, what happened against Damian Lillard? Uh, sorry, not Damian Lillard, against James Harden. We just got exposed for having DeAndre Aiden on the court. And that's kind of the reason he didn't come back into that Trailblazers game. Is because he would have gotten exposed if he got switched on to Damian Lillard. Actually, I think that happened during the third quarter. Damian Lillard's just like, I... I'm just gonna get to my spot. I'm gonna hit this step back three. There's nothing you can do. You're not fast enough. You can't stop me. And that's just, that, that sucks. You know, you want that to be better. You want that situation to be better. You you want DeAndre Aiden to uh, do better on the defensive end. And it wasn't just that. I mean, the uh, DeAndre Aiden did not do a good job against DeMontis Sabonis. DeMontis Sabonis with 22 points, 9 for 13 shooting, 13 rebounds, 10 assists. And, I mean, I, I realized he was being guarded by Jay Crowder and Dario Sarge for more, most of the fourth quarter, but a lot of it had to deal with DeAndre Aiden. And it wasn't just that. DeAndre Aiden even brings negative energy at times, like him getting blocked by Miles Turner. First of all, what was he doing? Uh... You know he's the best shot blocker in the NBA, and you went flat up against him. Like, you didn't try to initiate any contact. You didn't try to bump him. You just went, you tried to, I don't even know what he was trying to do. He was pretty much just trying to get blocked. And after he got blocked, then he didn't even try to get back on defense. And that's kind of why the Pacers went on that run, is because Suns players were not getting back on defense. And that's why... The Pacers really made that 19-point uh, run that, like, I think was like a 23-2 to run to give them a 20-point lead. And the Suns never come back from that, and a lot of it had to deal with DeAndre Aiden not getting back on the defensive end. I think, we, I think what we have to take from this is that a lot of teams are going to be trying to put DeAndre Aiden in a, in a bad situation defensively. This is one of the good situations defensively, and DeAndre Aiden could not stay on the court. I know there are other factors, like, he's really tired, he played 29 minutes in, yeah, 29 minutes in 33 minutes of game time, and, yeah, he played 29 out of the first 33 minutes. Okay, it's understandable that he might be tired, but he did not provide energy, he did not provide anything, actually, you know, and you want more from him, because he's a talented guy, and a lot of his... He's might legitimately be a top three big man in terms of talent, just flat out talent. But he just doesn't apply it at all. His mentality is one of the worst in the game. He doesn't have much of a motor. And that's really hurt the Phoenix Suns. And it, it was out in full force again. It sucks, man. I like that behind the back move, um, just mixing it up because most teams just expect him to stand there neither hand it off or just pass it. <laughs> I like that behind the back move, initiating uh, himself, scoring over Miles Turner. That was a good move. And I want to see more of that if he can do that consistently. But it's a, it's a lot of negatives for DeAndre Aiden. And this is a good, I really want to stress, this was a good game positionally for DeAndre Aiden. Every single, pretty much every team not named the Pacers has that lineup that DeAndre Aiden can get killed by, that can keep DeAndre Aiden off the court theoretically, unless he can do a good job guarding wings while also being a rim protector, and can also switch onto guards, which are skills he has in his bag, but he just doesn't apply them properly. He either gets tired, or he's not putting in energy, or he's not focused, and he just lets the game just blow right past him. And that's why we just want so much better from DeAndre Aiden, because he clearly has this talent. He's shown it at other times. 
and it's not even us complaining about uh, not posting up and not even trying to score. We're complaining about the thing he's supposed to be good at this season, which is defense. This is the thing he improved the entire offseason, it looks like. And he's still not doing that. <laughs> you know, he's still not playing well on the defense end. And I think I might as well just check right here. I'm going to look at DeAndre in real quick. Uh, and give me a second. Let's check out uh, a stat that I've talked about quite a few times with him on off. Uh, he is a minus 5.9 on off uh, rating, which is a plus minus net per 100 possessions. We can check out Dario Sarge. Where is he sitting at for that same exact rating? And may I remind you, Darius Sarge has done an amazing job on the offensive end, but he's nowhere near that level of defender of DeAndre Aiden. Dario Sarge is a plus 19.4 this season. That is ridiculous, you know? Um, that's, that, that's just that's, that's wild. Plus 19.4 on-off rating this season. And... Is there a point in time where we see Darius Sarge as the starter? Theoretically, he shouldn't, because DeAndre isn't that good defender. He isn't, you know, flat-footed like Sarge. Sarge isn't really getting up there to contest shots. He's not a good rim protector. I think he does a really good job at keeping up with wings and keeping up with guards at times. And he does a solid job on the switch. He does a solid job on recovering and pick-and-roll uh, pick defense. But he's not the level of defender of DeAndre Aiden. So, Sarge is not the permanent option at power at uh, center, and it's just such an awkward situation. I kind of want the Suns to trade for Richwan Holmes, which if you're on my Twitter, you're following me there, you might have seen that. Uh, maybe Richwan Holmes, you know, just with the team a few years back. I think that was really interesting when the team went back and forth between Holmes and Aiden. I thought it was somewhat successful. And you can pretty much just flat out trade Javon Carter and whatever other assets for Richwan Holmes. And I, I really think Holmes would work because he's one of the most uh, available options as a rim protector. I don't think the Kings are really committed to him or they would have re-signed him by this point. And he's fast. He can guard the perimeter a little bit. He will do a better job at, you know, providing energy. And being that guy behind DeAndre Aiden, who's going to scare him and look like he's going to take his job, which kind of looked like was going to happen originally with Rotorn Holmes. And I kind of want that. Uh, I think that could be a solid thing for the Suns to have. But just a guy to scare DeAndre Aiden, make sure he doesn't think his job is safe. This is what I've said again and again with DeAndre Aiden is you can't let him think that he's safe. You can't let him think, uh, I'm just going to get paid by this team. Because, you know, at this point, there's no guarantee he's getting a rookie max. There's no guarantee he's getting $20 million. Uh, I'm just going to say that right now. And I don't know if other teams would be willing to offer him that, considering he's a center position, but he hasn't done anything, you know, really well throughout his career. Maybe he's been a good rebounder, but other than that, he's not been elite in any category. I mean, he has the ability to be elite in every single center category, but he doesn't. He, he isn't. And yeah, I, I don't think teams are going to be willing to sign him for that much money, especially center position, not the most valuable position. So Aiden, I, I don't know how to deal with him. It, it's just such an odd situation. And Suns, once again, I'm just going to keep saying it. Find that center to scare DeAndre Aiden. Find a center. And yeah, be willing to move on from players like Javon Carter and maybe Frank Kaminsky if teams buy high on Frank Kaminsky. Even though I don't want to move on from Jalen Smith, and I just made a whole video about Jalen Smith, if there's a situation in which I see... Larry Nance available. Only one player I would be willing to trade uh, Jalen Smith for is Larry Nance. Larry Nance is the only situation in which I would give up Jalen Smith because I think Larry Nance is the player that every single team wants, which is another thing I posted on Twitter. Every single team wants this guy, but he just doesn't want to leave Cleveland, and he, he loves Cleveland, 
<laughs> uh, I really just wish we had Larry Nance. Larry Nance, such a great defensive player. He's really evolved as a defensive player. Is also a uh, lob catcher and can be a really solid throw on the offensive end. Can knock down threes. What is he shooting from three this season? I'm going to double check that right now. But Larry Nance, that's the only main guy I would really target who has a big contract, like like 8 to 10 mil. I think P.J. Tucker is interesting as a target for the Suns. I just don't think he's worth acquiring. Yeah, he's shooting 39% from three this season. I just don't think he's worth targeting because he isn't the guy that you want behind DeAndre Aiden. And I think, yeah, I mean, Dario Saric, it's not like we need to replace him. And I think he's done a really, really great job as a backup power forward. And then we'd also have a crowding at the forward position with Nader, Johnson, and Crowder, and Sarich off of the bench. But, you know, just bringing in that guy. I think the Suns need to find that rim protector, that guy who can catch lobs, who can rebound, could possibly guard the perimeter, but not necessarily, and hopefully be able to shoot the three. Uh, I know <laughs> pretty much the only guy who fits all of that with being relatively cheap to acquire is Larry Nance. And then there's no one, <laughs> like there's no one, then the next most, you know, available guy is Bam Adebayo, who fits all those care categories, you know? It's like, yeah, I, it, it's a hard situation. Suns do need to settle, but is settling with DeAndre in the right move when you have assets? And you could also put DeAndre in a situation which he needs to improve, he needs to get better, and needs to get paid, or whatever his priorities are. Just target his priorities to make him be a better player. That's that's what they have to do at this point, because everything with DeAndre is mental, you know? And that that's how we need to get DeAndre to improve. That's going to be it. I guess I'll talk about Jalen Smith for a second. Uh, Jalen Smith... I want to see him play, but it's probably not going to be until next season. Let me tell you right now, the Suns, they look good right now with Daria Sarch uh, as their backup five. When they have Jalen Smith in, and Jalen Smith is at 100%, this team's going to look even better than with Daria Sarch. Let me tell you that right now. Uh, he's got a lot of similar characteristics to Daria Sarch. Uh, not nearly as good as a post scorer. But he's faster and he's more athletic. <laughs> Let me tell you that right now. But he fills a lot of the same boxes and he's a better rim protector. He can also pass, he can score, he can drive, he can hit the three. And I think that's like that's everything the Suns want at center. So yeah, once once Jalen Smith gets that opportunity, right now Dario Sarch is checking all the same boxes. So they don't even need him. They don't even need him to play this season. But once he does. I think he's got a really good case to start. Uh, I just want to repeat that in this video. He's got a really case, to, a really good case to start over DeAndre Aiden. So uh, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Maybe click like, maybe click subscribe, maybe leave a comment. I don't know. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.